In the first video of this series, we covered the very, very basic operations of uh, showing things on screen using C Sharp. We covered the basics of taking input from the end user where we accepted the user's name and we said welcome or hello followed by the name that we had accepted. So two basic operations that we did in the first video, we covered the basic concepts of data types where we had two integers and we added them up and we showed the output of those two integers on screen. And then we also talked about strings and integers and how they are different and what variables are and how they are similar to the variables that we used when we were doing algebra in class four. So that was to get you started off with programming. In this video, we're gonna take some quick look at the very basic of decision making using a programming language. And the way we do use decisions in programming languages is very similar to the way we use decisions in real life. We think in terms of ifs and elses. And in this, in this case, ifs and elses that we use in programming languages are no different from the ifs and elses that we use when we're thinking. So let's say if I was to hire somebody and I, I had said that my policies, I'm gonna only hire people greater than 18 years of age. I look at the person's papers and say, if the person is above 18, then proceed to an interview or else tell the person sorry. So that if and else statement that I use all the time in terms of thinking about things is the exact same if and else logic that I'm going to use when I'm writing code. So let's take a classic example of an integer variable x, which is equal to 10. This is what we did in the last video also. We said x is a variable which is of type integer. It's going to hold an integer and the integer value that it's holding inside it is 10. So anytime I use the variable x, I know that I'm referring to 10. Now, out here x is equal to 10. Let's take a small decision here and let's say that if x is greater than 8, I want my compiler to run this line of code. Otherwise, or, or else, I want to run this chunk of code here. And if x is greater than 8, I want to print a message, console, write line, x is greater than 8. And if it, x is not greater than 8, I want to do a console.write line, x is less than 8. Fairly straightforward, simple enough. Let's run this piece of code. And let's also do a quick console dot read line here so that the program waits for an enter key so that I can see the output on screen. Let's quickly run this code and it says x is greater than 8 and the reason why it does that is because x is 10. So it comes here and it takes a decision saying if x is greater than 8, I want to run this line of code which is all about displaying x is greater than 8. So it goes and displays x is greater than 8. Now if this value of x was less than 8, which is let's say five, and let's run this code again. And this time sure enough, it displays X is less than eight. So very simple if then else logic out here. If X is greater than eight, do this, run this line of code or anything that falls between these two brackets. And if X is not greater than eight, run this line of code or anything that falls between these two brackets. Straightforward. Now, instead of hard coding this value to be five, I can actually take the value from the user. And remember last time we used console.readline to take a value from the user. So we're gonna use that exact same thing here. But the problem with console.readline is that it's reading a line of text from the console. So whatever the user enters, even if it's a number, it's always gonna be interpreted as a text. And in order to turn a text into a number so that we can now assign it to an integer variable, what we really need to do is typecast it and the, the, the word typecasting is very interesting. It's like casting, uh, it's like casting a block of steel into a statue or transforming it into something else, which is what we are really doing here. We are taking a type, a string, we are taking an input, which is a string and we are type casting, we're casting the type into that of an integer. So the easiest way to do that in C sharp is to do int dot parse, where I'm going to take an int string and I'm going to parse it and I'm going to transform it into an integer. So we're doing int dot parse. And this is since we're taking the value from the user, let's also go ahead and tell the user to enter a value. So let's say console dot write line enter a value that you want the decision to run on. We are asking the user to enter a value out here and 
whatever value he enters is going to go into x and based on the value that he's entered we're going to decide if the value is greater than 8 we're going to we are going to print that the value he's entered is greater than 8 otherwise we're going to print the value that he's entered is less than 8 let's quickly run this code and it's asking the user and let's go ahead and enter 10 and it says x is greater than 8 let's quickly run this code again and this time let's enter 5 and it says x is less than so it's able to take the input from the user based on the input that the user has given the input is going into a variable and then effectively we are making a decision out here now let's say if we wanted to evaluate whether the value that the user has entered is not just greater than 8 but it is also less than 10 which means the value has to be between 8 and 10 somewhere between 8 and 10 so, or let's say 8 and 15 what we are essentially saying here is that if the value that the user has entered is greater than 8 and it is less than 15 and the way to say and in C sharp is to use this double ampersand sign this is indicator of and and we're saying if the value that the user has entered which is inside x so if x is greater than 8 and x is less than 15 print this x is greater than 8 and x is less than 15 otherwise print something else so we're going to say x is not between 8 and 15 and let's run this code so let's say out here if I was to enter 10 it says x is greater than 8 and less than 15 and if I was to run the same code again and I was to enter 5 it says x is not between 8 and 15 similarly if I was to run this code again and enter 20 it says x is not between not between 8 and 15 so fairly straightforward we are using an AND operator here where we are saying if x is greater than 8 and less than 15. So instead of this AND operator what we can also do is we can use an OR operator where we can say that if x is greater than 8 or x is less than 4 I want to display a certain message otherwise I want to display a different message altogether. So the way to use OR operators in C sharp is using this and I'm saying if x is greater than 8 or x is less than 4 I want to display a message x is either greater than 8 or less than 4 in all other cases I want to display this message x is neither greater than 8 nor less than 4 let's quickly run this so let's enter 9 and in this case it says x is either greater than 8 and less than 4 because of course x the value that we are entering is greater than 8 so it displays this message straight away and let's run this program again and in this case let's enter 2 and again you get the same message because this time x is less than 4 so the way to evaluate the statement is pretty much how you would think about it where you're saying okay if x is greater than 8 or x is less than 4 which means either one of these two statements is true I want to run this line of code in all other cases I want to run this line of code pretty straightforward and simple so we use the AND operator and we use the OR operator let's also quickly take up till now we've just worked with uh, greater than and less than signs now let's also take a look at greater than equal to less than equal to and equal to operations so in this case what we are saying is if x is greater than 8 let's go back to the old scenario and x is less than 10 I want to display x is between 8 and 10 and in this case I want to display x is not between 8 and 10 we've run this code already so let's quickly go ahead and run it again and this time when I'm entering 9 it says x is between 8 and 10 but if I run the same code again and if I enter 8 it says x is not between 8 and 10 and the reason why it does that is because I've used a greater than operator and 8 is not greater than 8 8 is equal to 8 and so in this case if I wanted this code to run even when x was equal to 8 and 10 I would have to use greater than equal to and 
less than equal to signs which are pretty much written like this and this so now I'm saying if x is greater than or equal to 8 and x is less than or equal to 10 display this message otherwise display this message and in this case if we run this and if we enter 8 it says x is between 8 and 10 similarly if you were to run this and enter 10 it would also say x is between 8 and 10 but if we were to cross 10 and go into 11 it would say x is not between 8 and 10 and if we were to run this again and enter 7 it would say x is not between 8 and 10 so that's your greater than and less than equal to operator and now let's quickly go ahead and take a look at the equal to sign itself now the equal to sign that we are using here is to assign values into variables so this where we come in and say int y is equal to 10 we use an equal to sign in c sharp but this equal to sign is used to assign 10 to variable y uh, which is an integer type for comparison in c sharp what we use is a double equal to where we say if x is equal to 8 notice here we are using a double equal to sign we are not assigning 8 to x we are just comparing the value of x with 8 so to assign a value inside a variable use a single equal to sign to compare the value between variables you use a double equal to sign which is what we are doing here now let's run this code where we say the user is going to enter a value it's going to go into x and I'm going to say x is equal to 8 here and I'm saying x is not equal to 8 in this case so accept a value from the user if the value is equal to 8 run this line of code otherwise run run this line of code let's quickly run this and in this case if I enter 7 it says x is not equal to 8 let's run this code again if I enter 8 it says x is equal to 8 pretty straightforward equal to operator here of course we can now merge it with other operations that we've seen like AND operations or OR operations and greater than and less than for example if I wanted to evaluate if x is equal to 8 or if x is greater than 20 I wanted to display this x is equal to 8 x is either equal to 8 or greater than 20 and x is neither equal to 8 nor is 8 greater than 20 so let's quickly run this code in this code what we're saying is if x is equal to 8 or it's greater than 20 run this line of code otherwise run this line of code so let's run this let's enter 7 and it says x is neither equal to 8 neither is it greater than 20 we run this again this time we enter x we say x is either equal to 8 or greater than 20 let's run this code again let's enter 25 and it says x is either equal to 8 or greater than 20 very straightforward logic here so the idea here is that this and and or operators that we had used we can use combinations of and or greater than equal to less than equal to greater than less than equal to and we can combine them and then you can run different parts of code depending on different conditions so that's very very simple if then else logic in the next video we're going to go a little bit deeper into the if construct with the else if statement and we're going to try and do a couple of additional problems with it just so, so that you're comfortable with this with this if then else logic because you're going to use it quite a bit while writing code so in the next video we'll continue to dive deeper into the if statement and we'll use the else if statement also along with it and we'll go into the basics of if statement and how it works and more concepts on that but this is just about what we have for this video thanks for watching goodbye